بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليه أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الحدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد الحمد لله على نعمة الإسلام والسنة All praise and thanks belong to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala for the bounty and the blessing of Islam and the Sunnah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the Sunnah. Inshallah we would like to go over a very important and very vital book. It is a book that is authored by the Fudul to Shaykh Al Alama. Shaykh Saleh Al-Fawzan Ahmedullah Ta'ala This book is entitled Kitab Aqeedat Tawheed Kitab Aqeedat Tawheed The book of the Aqeedah of the Tawheed Yani For lack of a better translation This book is tremendous as you find It goes over the fundamental matters of the deen of al-Islam. The order of it is tremendous. The way in which the chapters come is outstanding. And the organization to the chapters themselves is awesome. This is a very important topic. As bi'ithnillahi ta'ala, we will get a glimpse of in tonight's class. It is a book, inshallah, ta'ala, that I encourage, as in all the books in which we go over, that we take good notes, bihnilahi ta'ala, and we refer back to them, inshallah ta'ala. The Shaykh, alhamdulillah ta'ala, he brings as the, the first chapter, the fasl awwal, the first chapter, the Bayan al Aqidati will Bayan Ahamiyatiha Bi'ati Bariha Assassin Yakumu Alehi Bina Deen. And really, the topic or the title of the chapter really gives you an indication to a lot. As it says, Fi Bayan al Aqida, or Bayan. And explaining the aqidah and explaining its importance. And then the Shaykh he says, 
assassin due to the standpoint that it is the foundation of which the foundation of the religion يقوم عليه بناء الدين almost the foundation of the religion or which يعني, the, the deen itself is built upon now that the aqidah is that in which the deen itself is built upon so right there we see the importance of the aqidah because the aqidah is that foundation upon which we will build our religion is the foundation upon which we will build our deen which shows you the importance of this ma'am and as always it shows you and this is an illustration pointing out the truthfulness in the da'wah to salafiyyah and how or an illustration showing us that the da'wah to salafiyyah here al islam wal islam wal haq that the the da'wah salafiyyah it is islam and islam is the truth islam is true Damn. in that you find that it is the standpoint or the main concern of the da'wah to salafiyyah to rectify first and foremost the aqidah of the muslims it's first and foremost Damn. the rectification of the aqidah of the muslims and as we know our da'wah is a da'wah that is built upon tafsir wa tarbiyah it's built upon purification and education purification and education and at the top of that is the rectification and purification educating the muslims about the aqidah and then that which follows it from the important matters of the religion Alakullin, the shaykh he begins so that we can have some background of what the word aqidah means because a lot of times it is translated as creed or beliefs so on and so forth but so we have some understanding on why aqidah has been named aqidah the shaykh he begins by coming at it from a linguistic standpoint so he says al-aqidah that aqidah inside of the language and as we say it's always important that we look at the linguistic background of a word because it helps us to better understand it helps us to better understand the full magnitude and meaning of the particular word if we know the linguistic background of it so the shaykh he says it comes from al-aqd in al-aqd which is ayn qaf del al-aqd it means a knot it means a knot right as you say in the arabic language as the fi'l that is derived from this particular word al-aqd is aqda aqda ya'qidu and then the masdar aqdan so you have aqda this is fi'l madhi this is the past tense verb Ya'qidu, this is the present tense verb, fi'l al mudari' And then you have the masdar, aqdan. Aqda means to tie something into a knot, or to bind something or tie it into a knot. Now, Ya'qidu, yani he is tying into a knot. So aqda, he tied into a knot. Ya'qidu, he is tying into a knot. Right? And then you have aqdan which is the masdar or the verbal noun from which the, the words, yani, which all of these things are derived from and this is al or a knot something that is tied, tied down something the shaykh he says wa huwa rabbu shaykh and it means to tie something down to tie something down, right? also in the Arabic language you find that the word that is utilized for contract is also al aqdu naam, al aqdu or aqdun al aqdu right this is the word that is used for a contract word that is used for a contract because a contract it ties down the parties involved 
to those terms and stipulations that are present in the contract. So inside the contract, each individual party, they must abide by the terms of the contract. So it ties them down to those terms and those clauses of the contract. It binds them to it, right? It binds them to it. So therefore, the word that they use to articulate this particular concept is al-aqd, al -aqd. And likewise, al also means not. al also means not. al the Shaykh, he says, so if a person were to say, وَاَتَقِدْتُ كَذَا نعم وَاَتَقِدْتُ نعم He would say that he has يعني, made an i'tiqad of something right? وَاَتَقِدْتُ وَاَتَقِدْتُ كَذَا وَاَتَقِدْتُ كَذَا He say, hey, عَقَدَتْ عَلَيْهِ الْقَلْبُ الضَّمِيرُ if a person were to say that I have taken an i'tiqad or I have yani i'tiqad to this particular thing, then this means that his heart has or is binded to it. It means that his heart is bound to this particular thing. Right? His heart is bound to, to that particular thing. Does that make sense? Right? That makes sense. His heart is tied and linked to that particular thing. Well, aqidah, and aqidah. So now we come to the word al aqidah, al aqidah. Ma yadinu bihi insan. It is that which an individual he takes as a creed, that which he takes as a religion, that which someone believes in. Now he takes it as a creed. Al aqidah. It is that which a person will take as a creed. Right? It can be said about it, Aqidatun Hasanatun, that it is a creed that is good. It's a goodly creed. Right? Aqidah Hasana. What is meant by Aqidah Hasana? A Salima. It means that it is free. From doubt, it is free from doubt. So you say aqidatun, hasanatun, and this means this is a creed that is free from doubt. Something that an individual he's certain about it. He's not shaky about it. He's not in doubt, right? He's not confused, but rather it's something he's certain. He's certain about this thing now, right? So we say a person has aqidah, or a person a man he says yani. Uh, then it's something he's he's firm about. His heart is attached to it, he's tied to it, he's certain of it. He's not confused or he's wavery about it, but he's firm, he's sure. He's sure about this particular thing. Right? Well aqida amilu qalbi. An aqida is an action of the heart. Then aqida is an action of the heart. Wahiya imanu qalb bishay. And it is the Belief of the heart with, with regard to a particular thing, what tasdiquhu bihi, and it is the heart affirming and having an affirmation for this particular thing. So, if a person his aqidah is that which he is firm about and sure about and believes with a certainty inside of his heart, it is from the actions of the heart. Right? All of this is a background of the word al aqidah inside of the language. All of this is from a linguistic standpoint and from the language. So we can see now, we can start to begin to see the connection of why aqidah is called aqidah. The Shaykh he says, well aqidah to shar'an, and aqidah shar'an, what is referred to is here, al-iman billah, wa malaikatihi, wa kutubihi, wa rusulih, wa yawm al-akhir, wa yawm al-akhir, wa al-iman bil-qadr, khayrihi wa sharrih. وَتُسَمَّ هَذِهِ أَرْكَانُ الْإِيمَانِ He says, and uh, in the side of the legislation, the word aqidah 
it means a belief or the belief in Allah, the proper belief in Allah, Jalla wa'ala, and the side of his angels, the proper belief in the angels, and the proper belief in his books, and in his messengers, and the day of judgment, or the last day, and inside of Qadr, the good and bad of it. And these are also called the Arkan of Iman. They're also called the pillars of faith. The pillars of faith. Naam. So when we speak about Aqidah, inside of the, the Deen, it is going to be linked back to our belief in these aforementioned pillars, in these Arkan of Iman. Right? And that which is linked and connected to it. So the proper belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his rububiya, and his uluhiya, and his asma wa sifat, and so on and so forth, right? All of this is linked to properly believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we understand now, when we speak about aqidah, that which we're speaking about. And the shaykh, he brings forth more clarity when he says, wa sharia tanqasimu ila qusmain, that the Islamic legislation, or the sharia, the deen of al-Islam, it's, it can be broken down into two different categories, right? Two different categories. al i'tiqadat, the beliefs, wa amaliyat, and the actions. The beliefs and the actions, right? As far as the beliefs, the shaykh, he says, for i'tiqadat, which is the first, he says, wa hiya allati la tata'allaqu bi kayfiyat al-amal then the beliefs, it is that which is not linked to the description of a particular action. So it's not linked to the way an action will be done and performed. And the Shaykh, he says, مثل اعتقاد ربوبية لا He said, for example, believing in the Lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa wujub ibadati and that it is obligatory to worship Allah and Allah Ta'ala alone. Right? بَقِيَةِ الْأَرْكَانِ الْإِسْلَامِ And the belief in, or Iman, Afwan, and the belief in the rest of the pillars of Al-Iman, Al-Madhkura. To believe in the rest of the pillars of, is of Al-Iman, which have been mentioned. Right? Meaning the belief in the, the angels and the messengers and the books and the day of judgment and Qadr Khayri wa Sharra, right? All of this is from the first category and the first type, and that is Al I'tiqadat, the beliefs, the beliefs, right? What to Simma Asliya. And these beliefs or the I'tiqadat, the aqidah, then this is what is called al-asliya this is the foundation this is the foundation right and it's very important we understand that this right here the aqidah this is the foundation right this is the foundation the second type or the second category of the sharia is al-amaliyat the actions those actions that are performed يتعلق بكيفية العمل مثل الصلاة والزكاة والصوم وسائر الأحكام العملية. For example, like the prayer, the giving of charity, fasting, and the rest of the legislative actions, or less, and the rest of the rules that are associated with the actions, right? All of this is from the amaliyat, the actions. Wahiya to Samma Faraiya. And this has been called the Faraiya. And Faraiya al Fara is that which stems off and branches off of something else. Right? Al Fara. The branches of something. So the Faraiya 
shows you that these are what those of uh, those things which branch out. They branch out. Or the subsidiary, sometimes they translate them as the, the subsidiary uh, issues. But here we understand why it is that which branches out or that which stems from, right? The Shaykh says, the Anna Tubna ala tilka siha wal fasad, because it is built upon those, meaning it is built upon the aqidah that the fara'iyya. Right? It's called Fara'iya because it is built upon the Fara'iya, uh, excuse me, it's built upon the Asl, the Asliya, right? From the standpoint of if it is correct or if it is wrong or erroneous. From the standpoint, if it counts or it don't count, it's based upon what? The Aqidah. And this is why it's called Fara'iya. This is why it's called Fara'iya. That which stems out because it's based upon what? The foundation. If the foundation is sound, then those actions are going to count. If that foundation is not correct, those actions are not going to count. They're not going to count. And an example, an example of this is clear. We're going to we're going to bring some 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 adilla, right? But example of this is like what Abdullah ibn Umar he said to those who were qadariyah. As it comes in the first hadith of Sahih Muslim, Hadith Jibreel, he told those individuals that what? With regards to the Qadariya, he said, and know that even if they were to spend the like of the mountain of Uhud in gold, it would never be accepted from them until they believe in Qadr. So even if they came with a charity that was tremendous, because as we know, a mountain of any sort is a lot of gold and a mountain of Uhud is a tremendous mountain is a very huge and big mountain right but even if they were to spend a great deal of charity so much so that it, it that, that it equated to the weight of the mountain of Uhud in gold it would never be accepted why because there was a problem with their aqidah there was a problem with their origin because they didn't believe in what? In Qadr. They didn't believe in Qadr. So it won't be accepted. So we see here, this was what? The understanding of the Sahaba. That if an individual, his aqeed is not right, his deeds in trouble, his deeds ain't going to be accepted. He don't believe in Qadr, his deeds not going to be accepted. He doesn't believe in Qadr, his deeds not going to be accepted. He doesn't implement the Tawheed, no deeds, his deeds not going to be accepted. The Shaykh, he says, for aqeedah, as sahiha the aqidah that is correct, here asas, this is the foundation, alladhi yaqumu alayhi deen, of which the deen it is yani, founded upon, wa tasihu ma'ahu al a'mal, and only with it are the actions correct. Only with the right aqidah are the actions correct. And we see that from Allah Ta'ala's statement, which is a proof and dalil for this. Also, a proof and dalil for this is what we mentioned from the hadith of uh, Jibreel. Is that Allah Ta'ala's statement, فَمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُوا لِقَاءَ رَبِّهِ And whoever is looking forward to the meeting with his Lord. فَلْيَعْمَلْ عَمَلًا صَالِحًا Then let him perform righteous good deeds. وَلَا يُشْرِكْ بِعِبَادَةِ رَبِّهِ أَحْدًا To let him perform righteous good deeds and what? And not associate anything as partners with his Lord. And to not associate anything as partners with his Lord. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us here in this ayah, is teaching us here in this ayah, that the actions of a person wants to bring forth righteous good deeds, that it has to be founded, it has to be built upon the sound creed, it has to be built upon aqidah. If it's not built upon the sound aqidah, if it's not built upon a tawheed, then what? Doesn't count. Doesn't count. It's not going to count. It's not going to help him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ وَإِلَّا الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ لَإِنْ أَشْرَكْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكَ 
ولا تكونن من الخاسرين. The first ayah that we mentioned, this was in Surah Al-Kahf, and it's verse 110. This ayah here, وَلَقَدْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيْكَ To the end of the ayah, this can be found in Surah Al-Zumar, and it's verse 65. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says what translated means, and it was revealed unto you, O Muhammad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this ayah, he's addressing the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as the ulama, they explain the general rule, is that that, or those addresses to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, right, then this is applicable to the ummah as well. The ummah is also being spoken to. Alakullin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and, and verily it has been revealed to you, O Muhammad, as it was revealed to those who came before you. Right? Now this particular portion of the address, this is to who? The Prophet Sallallahu and specifically to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It, it, it has been revealed to you, O Muhammad, and those who came before you. And this next part is applicable to all of us, to the Ummah. And that is, لَإِنْ أَشْرَفْتَ لَيَحْبَطَنَّ عَمَلُكْ وَلَا تَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ that if you were to associate partners in worship with Allah, then verily, no doubt about it, all of your deeds will be rendered null and void, and they will not count, and verily, most definitely, you will be from the losers. This is applicable to who? To everyone. But it's a dalil that what? That if you bring forth shirk, if we bring shirk, if we bring forth the associating of partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what? Then our deeds don't count when our deeds don't count right so if we bring forth shirk regardless from what type of shirk it is whether that was shirk in, in rububiyya or that was shirk in uluhiyya or that was shirk in asma wa sifat if we bring forth shirk shirk al-akbar with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then what then our deeds don't count no deeds if a man makes a shirk with his deed right whether that deed, whether that shirk is akbar or asghar, if he mix with his if he mix with his deed shirk, the deed doesn't count. Period. Whether it's akbar or asghar, and inshallah ta'ala we will come to this chapter and go into more detail. But in brief, whether it's the major shirk or the minor shirk, if it enters into a deed, the deed doesn't count. Period. The deed is over. If a person has major shirk then all of his deeds are destroyed. All of his deeds are destroyed. Right? And this is because what? Because a person had a problem in his aqidah. Because he had a problem in his aqidah, then now his deeds, they don't count. His deeds don't count. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, فَعْبُدِ اللَّهَ مُخْلِصًا لَهُ الدِّينَ And worship Allah alone, making all of the religions is silly for Allah. Allah lillah deen al khalis does not, yani, or, yani, uh, is it not but for only Allah to have all the sincerity for the deen? Our sincerity is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This also, this is a surah al Zumar as well, and it's verse number two and three. Verse number two and three. Right? So, Shaykh Fawzan, he says, فَدَلَّتْ هَذِهِ الْآيَاتِ الْكَرِيمَةِ وَمَا جَاءَ بِمَعَانِيهَا أو بما جاء بمعناها وهو كثير. He says so these ayat and that which comes bearing its meaning and they are a lot. على أن الأعمال لا لا تقبل إلا إذا كانت خالصة من الشرك ومن ثم كان اهتمام الرسل صلوات الله وسلامه عليهم بإصلاح العقيدة أولا. He says, and from this standpoint, now that we have come to see that, the ayat, they show us that the actions, they will, will not be accepted unless they are sincere and they are pure from shirk. The actions will not be accepted unless they are pure from shirk, polytheism. So from this standpoint, we see that the that which was important for the, the messengers was the rectification of the aqidah firstly 
was to firstly rectify the aqidah. Now, and when one contemplates and he reflects upon this, he realizes that this is the only way to do it. Why? One, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches, in the, teaches in, in, in the Quran. This is what the Prophet said to teaches in the Sunnah. This is what all the prophets and messengers were upon. They rectify the people's aqidah first. Right? So we have our proofs from the Quran, the Sunnah, and the way of the Salaf. And that's enough for us. It's enough for us. Right? For the one the person upon the truth, one proof is enough. One proof is enough. For a person upon bid'ah, you could bring him hundreds and hundreds of proof, and he is not enough. He want more. Yeah, yeah, but what about? What do you mean by what about? What's your proof? You know, you ever make someone like this, you bring him an ad, you bring him a hadith, right? It's a clear proof. Yeah, but what about this? What about this? What about, what do you mean what about this? What about that? This and that does not remove the fact that the proof has already been established. Look, the proof is there. It's clear. You can't do it. What about, what about under certain circumstances? No, the proof says you can't do it. So you can't do it. Or the proof said you must do this. So you must do it. That's it. But what about if the proof says you must do it? Right? Like a person may come in, you know, you bring a person, Alice Bili Mitha. The hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu where he says, وَمَا تَحْتَ الْكَعْبَيْنِ فَفِنَّارِ كَمَا قَالَ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم. And whatever is under the ankles is in the fire. Right? Showing us that uh, to, yani, is, 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 is haram. Having your, your garments below your ankles is haram. When a person come and he say, but what if I have a job interview? Right? But what if I have a job interview and I have to go in there, I got to put my suit on and so on and so forth, and it's really, really important because yeah, yeah, I've been out of work for a long time, you know, the economy is bad, and, I, and it's really, really important to have to make a good, good impression and so on and so forth. So could I just, you know, in this circumstance, out of this, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, you know, uh, very serious situation, quote unquote, or out of necessity, can I just go, you know, let it be below my, my ankles? He said, but I, I gave you the proof. The proof is there. There's no going around it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, one of the one of the one of the the guys online in the group asked the sheikh. He said it's okay. Yeah, salam. I gave you the proof. What do you mean? You really went online, asked the sheikh, and he said, "Yo, it's fine." Right? And people start playing games like this. Oh, oh, oh. But what about this? Oh, oh. What about that? Yeah, salam. They come and they say, oh, oh, but Allah says he doesn't put a burden upon a person that can't bear. Yeah, salam. And you putting, cutting your garment so it falls above your ankles. This is not a burden that's beyond your scope. How, yeah, it's not hard. If it's too hard for you to cut, give it to someone else and they cut it. If you don't know how to sew, someone else know how to sew. It's not that difficult. Right? It's really not that hard. But people try to bring things like that. Allah doesn't put a burden on the soul that it can't bear. That's true. But it doesn't remove the fact that you have to keep your pants above your ankles. Right? A sister may come and say, but I got to work. I got to feed my family, this, that, and that. So I can't wear, I can't, I can't cover. Allah don't burden the soul more than it can bear. Are you kidding me? Allah Ta'ala says, why for you to cover? It's not a burden for you to cover. It's not a burden. And how do we know it's not a burden? Because Allah made it wajib, and Allah said, there's a place of burden upon a soul it can't bear. So the verse that you use is actually against you. The fact that Allah made it wajib, we know you can do it. We know you can do it. You see? Ala kullin, you find people try to wiggle around like this. But this is not from our way. It's not from our way. Ala kullin, for the one who's upon Sunnah, the Salafi, is clear. You bring a proof come, khalas, that's enough for us. Right? But if an individual, even if he was to look at this from rationally, right, intellectually, he'll look at this standpoint. Of course, the first thing that the prophets and messengers will concentrate on is the aqidah. Why? Because if the people had bad aqidah, no matter what you call them to, from good deeds and righteous actions and so on and so forth, is a waste of time. Because it doesn't count anyway. Right? Like these individuals that Abdullah ibn Umar, he was talking about, these Qadriya, these first Qadriya. Is that what? 
even if they spent the like of the mountain of Ohud in gold, it don't count. So now, would it make sense to go to such a people and encourage them to give money, to encourage them to spend in the way of Allah, to encourage them, right, to spend feasibility? If a person were to do that, it would be what? It would be a waste of his time. His time would be ill spent. Why? Because they have a problem that is tremendous, that is severe, that is deadly, that's going to make what they spend null and void. It's going to make what they spend null and void. Right? Like those individuals who are given to grave worshiping and uh, going to uh, the graves and asking the saints for this or asking the saints for that. We have to go to them with Tawheed. Not, oh, but make sure you do this, make sure. Tawheed. And teach them. Why? Because those actions that they're putting forward is not going to count because of the shirk that they're committing. It's not going to count. So you find that the prophets and the messengers, they went to a people and they called them to the Tawheed first. And if we reflect back to the different communities in which the prophets and the messengers were sent to, you will find they had a lot of problems. They had a lot of social uh, vices and so on and so forth and a lot of different social problems. You know, from murdering and uh, drinking of alcohol and, and so on and so forth. They had, they had a lot of problems, you know, prostitution amongst the, the different uh, nations and communities and so on and so forth, Zena and all these things. There were problems that were there. But with all of this, they what? They called the people to Tawheed first. Because that's what's going to rectify society, Tawheed. That's what's going to benefit the people, Tawheed. And after that, then. You teach them those things that are, or injunction to that, yeah, you teach them those things that are uh, binding upon them from the religion. But the focus has to be upon rectifying their aqidah. This is the focus. You rectify the aqidah of the people, right? And you discuss and go over those matters that they need from the deen, like learning how to pray, you know, so on and so forth. This is, this is, this is the way. And this is what's going to bring a rectification to the society. Whereas, to go to a people who have problems and vices and so on and so forth and speak about these things and stay away from aqidah and so on and so forth, this is of no benefit to anyone. It's of no benefit to anyone. You're setting them up for loss. You're setting up for loss and for humiliation. Which shows us another standpoint of the destructive nature of the da'wah of Ahlul Bid'ah and of the people of Hizbiyah. They come with everything but everything but right everything but as uh, al maghrib institute right they had a function recently about love foolishness like this right you may have heard about it about love and how to love and all this nonsense and, you know no lie to me what their intention was Right? But we all know with them, it's, it's games just to bring people in for money and the like. You're having a gathering talking about love and all this type of stuff, right? And one of your main teachers is very proficient in magical tricks and teaching or yani showing magic. Right? So what kind of seminar is going to benefit the people about love and how to romance and good relation amongst the husband and the wife? And they have an instructor that's teaching them shirk and kufr. So a person got all his magic stuff, and he loving the magic and all this type of stuff, but yeah, he gonna treat, he gonna bring his wife flowers and all this stuff. What benefit is that for them, real for real? None. No benefit. And you have these evil things going on. And it goes on and on and on. From all of the politically uh, based talks and lectures in which people give, uh, trying to spread understanding and tolerance and all this type of stuff 
is of absolutely no benefit for the people, but if anything, it is detrimental to the people. Why? Because when they do these things, they corrupt and they erode and they attack the people's our people. So the person is saying, but wait, it's just a talk about tolerance. Right? So it's, it's, just, it's just a gathering about tolerance, how we should be tolerant with each other, and we should learn how to respect each other, and we should learn not to, yeah, I mean, whatever. You know, this is what they, uh, the, the main thing that they're on right now, you find Isna, and, and Ikna, and, and Maghrib, and Zaytuna, and all of them, right? On this thing of um, uh, spreading, uh, uh, you know, mutual understanding, and not teaching hate, and all this type of stuff. This is, this is their, their main slogan that they are running with right now. So people are coming and say, face value, that sounds good. That sounds right, something like something virtuous. Not realizing that these are attacks upon their apita. They're destroying the people's apita. Because when you get in there, you'll find them saying, like with this treaty, that El Isna and teachers from Maghrib, they sign with the Shia. That we will foster an environment of respect and we will not teach hate. Seriously? With the Shia? Those who say that the Quran we have is not the Quran? Those who say that our mother Aisha committed an act of adultery? Those who say that Jibreel made a mistake and not made a mistake but he disobeyed Allah and betrayed the trust and gave the Risala to Muhammad when it should have went to Ali? Those who say that Ali is Allah, we're not supposed to hate these people. That's from our deen, we don't hate them. Of course we hate them. We hate for Allah. As the Prophet said, he said, this is from one of the greatest signs of any faith and aspects of faith that we love for Allah, we give for Allah, we hate for Allah, and we withhold for Allah. So of course individuals are just supposed to be hated. But they'll come and say, don't hate them. Is that not a, a, a clear onslaught upon a person's aqidah? A clear onslaught upon a person's aqidah? They'll come and they say, well, we have to have foster understanding and tolerance and so on and so forth and show the similarity between us and the Jews and the Christians and, and, and to the end of that with the inner faith, right? Which leads us to what? And the Jews and the Christians actually, they are Ahl kitab and they're not kufar, but the Ahl kitab so we respect them as such. Uh, and, and we can't say that they're kuffar. Seriously? A kuffar. Allah Ta'ala says they're kuffar. But they'll come and say, no, don't say they're kuffar, they're ahl kitab That's a direct onslaught upon a person's aqidah. And as we learned from the, the Nawaqid of Islam class, right, that a person who doesn't make takfir, who doesn't deem as being a kafir, those whom Allah Ta'ala has labeled as being kuffar, this is what? This is that which makes you a kafir. This takes you outside Islam. Attacks upon the aqidah. The rafidah, the kuffar. Isna says inside of its uh, overview of the peace treaty in which they signed that they discouraging name calling. Like rafidhi, kafir. Seriously? Discouraging name calling? The rafidhi is a kafir. What I'm supposed to call him? That's like coming to me and saying, don't call a dog a dog. It's a dog. We're supposed to call it a cat. It's a dog. The Rafidi is worse than a dog. It's a kafir. I'm supposed to call him. He's a kafir. They asked Sheikh bin Baz, and Imam bin Baz, rahimahullah ta'ala, about the Rafidah. And he said, Hum al kuffar. They're kuffar. They're kuffar. They're talking about they got more surahs than we got in the Quran. That person's a Muslim? Talking about we don't got the whole Quran, they got it, they got more, we only have a third of it. That person's a Muslim? Saying that Ali is Allah, that person's a Muslim? Jibril betrayed the trust, the Prophet was not supposed to be the Prophet. That person's a Muslim? That person's a Kafir. But it's not saying, no, no, no. You know, you know, name calling. It's a kafir. Who said name calling is bad? If you're calling the right name, that's the haq. It's a kafir. Right? It's a kafir. 
We don't apologize for that. The Jews and the Christians, Ahli Kitab. Yeah, they Ahli Kitab. Who Ahli Kitab or Kufar? That's what Allah Ta'ala says in the Quran, Ahli Kitab or Kufar. But see, this is the onslaught that they put on a person's aqidah. They're they destroying a person's aqidah. Destroying it. And this is why you find that the aqidah and the minhaj, as a Sheikh Rabir, Allah he says that they, they go together. They go together. Right? The Sheikh, he says they go together just like the Shahada tango go together. They go together just like the Shahada tango go together. And this is why the ulama, they say that anyone who has a problem in his minhaj has a problem in his aqidah, even if we don't see it. You understand? If a person has a problem in his minhaj, he has a problem in his aqidah, even if we don't see it. A person, he come and he say, but this person, he sits with Zay Shakir and Hamza Yusuf and so on and so forth, but he's Salafi. So they want, to, they want you to come and say, oh, yeah, it's a Qadi, right? He's upon Sunnah, right? No, he's upon Bid'ah. Right? His problems when it comes to his minhaj is clear. It's clear. So whether we see his mistakes in Aqidah or not, we know they're there. We know they're there. Because only a person that has deficiencies in, in his Aqidah can even stomach the likes of Zayd Shaq and Ahem Zeus. Let alone the Shia. Read about it. No, 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 no Sunni can stomach a Shia, period. Because of the, 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 the evil that the Rafi is upon. Alakulli, anyone that can sit in stomach these ones and defend them and so on and so forth, clearly has a problem with his Aqidah. And then to launch his attacks against Ahl Sunnah, against the people upon the Sunnah, the Salafis. To launch all of his attack is a venom upon the Salafi and then sign a treaty with the likes of Zay Shakir and Hamza Yusuf and so on and so forth, then he's going to say he's upon the Sunnah? What do you mean? What Sunnah? Not the Sunnah of the Prophet, I said, The Sunnah of Hassan Banda, the Ikhwani. Okay. We'll accept that from you. They're upon the way of the Ikhwan. We'll accept that from you. The way of the Qutbiyah. We'll accept that from you. But upon the way of Ahl Sunnah? No. No. It was from the way of Hassan al-Banna, the founder of the Ikhwan al-Muslimin, to try to join ranks with the Shia. Now, that was from his, from his original mandate, to try to join ranks with the Shia, and join elbows with them, and foster community, foster, yani, foster what do you call it, uh, cooperation between them, the Sunni and the Shi'i. That's from the way of Hassan al-Banna, the Ikhwan. It's an Ikhwan way. Do whatever needs to be done, whatever it takes us. That's the Ikhwani way. Not the way of Ahlul Sunnah. Going and joining ranks with the Sufi. That's the Ikhwani way. That was with Hassan al Banna. Sufi. That's the Ikhwani way. It's not the way of Ahlul Sunnah. So, no, they're not upon the Sunnah. Not the Sunnah of Mustafa, sallallahu The Sunnah of the Ikhwan? Okay, we'll accept that from you. The Sunnah of the Prophet, sallallahu No way. No way. Naam. And the Kulin. This is just another illustration to show you how these individuals are very destructive. They beautify falsehood. And this is the way of shaitan. This is the way of shaitan, that they beautify falsehood. They take things that are false and they beautify them so that they don't seem false. They take things that are wrong and they beautify it so it don't seem wrong. Take things that are bad and they beautify it so it don't seem bad. But the reality is that what's evil is evil. Nothing can change that. No matter how much you dress it up, it's still evil. What's bad is bad, no matter how much you dress it up, it's still bad. The road that leads to hell, leads to hell, no matter how glamorous it is, no matter how much sparkling it is, and how adorned it is, it leads to the hellfire. The final destination is bad. So we have to be careful and we have to safeguard our aqidah. Because if we don't rectify the aqidah, if we don't have that firm foundation, then that which is built upon it is going to crumble. It's not going to count. It's not going to avail us. So you find for this reason 
the prophets and the messengers, alayhim salatu wasalam, the first thing that they called their people to was the islah al-aqidah. وَأَوَّلُ مَا يَدْعُونَ أَقْوَامَهُمْ And the first thing that they called their people to, we're talking about rectifying the aqidah, right? But at the head of the rectification of the aqidah, the first thing they would call their people to was إلى عبادة الله وحدة To worship Allah and Allah alone. وَتَرْكْ عِبَادَ مَا سِوَى And to leave off the ibadah of other than Allah. It was the first thing they called them to. So people can come and they say, but there's a da'wah out there that islahiyyah, there's a da'wah islahiyyah, and they, uh, they do a lot of good stuff like jama'at al-tabliq, as for example. People come and they say, jama'at al-tabliq, jama'at al-da'wah, they, they're really good, they do this, they do that. Wait, let us examine, let us see. Can they really be good? And they place no emphasis upon tawheed? Can they really be good? And of course the answer is no. No matter what they encourage people to do from that which is yeah, they seemingly good, in reality, they're calling them to that which is bad because they're busying them. They're busying them upon things that are not the most important and most vital things for them. They're busy wanting to get people to come to the masjid and do this and do that and do this and do that, but they're not teaching them tawheed. So you find even in their main masjid, they have graves in it. Even in their main masjid, Tablighi headquarters, right? They have graves inside of it. So what's the use of calling a person to a masjid and to come in to pray if you're going to go to a masjid with the masjid of the people uh, that got the graves in it and then throw notes after salah to the, to the person dead there? It happens. In the masjid of Hussein, the masjid of Bedawi, and so on and so forth. It happens. After salah, people get up and they go to the, you know, the, 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 the window there, whatever, and they be making dua, asking for stuff, taking paper stuff, written on it, throwing it back there. Right? So this type of individual now, he just came and he prayed the whole prayer. For, for what? What benefit is it for him? And he's making a shirk al akbar So bringing the people back to the masjid again, encouraging them to come to the masjid, play, to come to the masjid and you're not teaching them until he, there's no, there's, no, there's no benefit in that call. That call is dead. That call is dead. It's not going to help a person. Call is dead. So let us weigh that now, the way of the tablir and the way of the rusul. Allah Ta'ala says about the prophets and the messenger, Allah Ta'ala says, وَلَقَدَ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنِعْبَدُ اللَّهَ وَاشْتَنِبُ الطَّابُوتِ And we said to every nation a messenger proclaiming, worship Allah alone and stay away from the idols. This was the call, this was the da'wah of the messengers. Right? And we know the da'wah of the messengers is true. Is this what we see the tabligh upon? No. This is not what we see them upon. We don't see them calling to tawheed and warning against shirk. We don't see that. So therefore we know we understand that what? That the da'wah of the tabligh is what? Is a da'wah that is destructive, is harmful, is evil. Is a da'wah that is upon bid'ah. So it's a da'wah that's bad. It can never be good, ever. There's a tabligh. They know how they come around in, in, in groups, right? Three times, I think. One time we were talking with him, and he was, a, he was like the main one, I guess, whatever. The main guy. Because you know they have like cronies, and then one guy is like the main guy. So we sorted, we sorted it out and got to the main guy, right? Got to the main guy. And the main guy is not necessarily always the guy that talk. Because they don't care. Sometimes a person could be Muslim just that same day. They'd be telling him, give da'wah to somebody. Right? Allah So not necessarily the guys that talk. Anyway, he was able to get to the main guy. So I asked the main guy, how long you been with Tablit? He told me at the time, I forget how many years. It was a long time. It was about years. Right? He said, been with Tablit for years. I said, okay. I said, can I ask you a question? He said, sure. I said, what is the meaning of la ilaha illallah? Give a tabligh all this time, you out here giving da'wah, going door to door, stuff like this, right? What is the meaning of la ilaha illallah? The main guy start looking at the other two guys. Right? Well, you know what it means, right? I'm asking you a question. What is the meaning of la ilaha illallah? Start looking around, fidgeting, you know, start trying to like, you know, give me a uh, fluff talk. 
by talking around it. I just said, look, just tell me the meaning. Like you're saying all this stuff, just tell me the meaning. Well, you know, every Muslim knows this. Isn't it? All right, well, you didn't tell me the meaning then. You've been with a tablet all this time, all these years. Tell me the meaning. He said, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm be loud with some Salafis there, a group of us, right? Look at the Salafis. Everybody can tell you the meaning. Everybody. Right? So we told him, we told him, he said, okay, alhamdulillah, let us teach you. The meaning of la ilaha illallah, la ma'abuda bihaqqin illallah. Nothing has a right to person to truth except Allah. And the dalil is this, is Allah, Allah Ta'ala's statement, that is because Allah Ta'ala is the truth, and that which is called upon other than him is false. Dalil, la ilaha illallah, la ma'abuda bihaqqin illallah. Right? And stuff like this. And then after that, I said to him, see, this is why we say and we know that Jamaat of Tabligh, they do not concentrate on Tawheed and teaching the people Tawheed, and they do not concentrate on warning the people from shirk and the dangers of shirk. And then from there, we started to build Danny, the case. Why we don't want to hear it? To the enemy. Right? hal, it is important that we recognize the likes of these things so we don't fall into the traps of the people of innovation because those traps are destructive, destructive, right? And we know this is the reality because the Prophet Sallallahu tells us that what, that the way of, or that bid'ah is what? In the hellfire. وَشَرُّ أُمُورِ مُحْدَثَاتُهَا وَكُلُّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ وَكُلُّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ وَكُلُّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ the worst of all affairs are newly invented matters. Every newly invented matter in the religion is a bid'ah. Every bid'ah is a going astray. Every going astray is where? In the fire. Bid'ah leads to the fire. Bid'ah leads to the fire. So we understand that this is a destructive way. This way is wrong. The bid'ah leads to the fire. Right? But from looking at it from this standpoint and looking at the reality of the situation, then we can see we can see now a little better why the bid'ah is so dangerous, why the Salaf would take the stances they would take and stay away from the people of innovation. Because the bid'ah, it is that which eats away at what? At the foundation. It eats away at the aqidah. And that which will erode and eat away at the aqidah is what? It puts all your deeds in jeopardy. It puts all of your deeds in jeopardy. It is that which will result in the fire. This is why they are so dangerous. This is why the Sunnah is so staunch and serious with regards to the likes of these individuals. Ala kullin, the Shaykh says, wa kullu rasul yaqul wa awwal ma yuqatid qawma. He said, and all, the, all of the messengers, they used to say, and the first thing they would say to their people, fi'abudu allaha ma lakum min ilahin wa They would say, worship Allah alone. We don't have anything that has the right to be worshipped except for him. This was the first thing they said. The Shaykh he says, He said, This is what Nuh and Hud and Saleh and Shu'ayb and all of the prophets said to their people. This is what they said to their people. صلى الله عليه وسلم في مكة بعد البعثة ثلاثة عشر عام يدعو الناس إلى التوحيد. He said, and the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he stayed in Mecca for 13 years calling the people to التوحيد وإصلاح العقيدة and rectifying their عقيدة لأنه أو لأنها الأساس الذي يقوم عليه بناء الدين because this is the foundation, the aqidah is the foundation upon which the structure of the deen is built. Upon which the structure of the deen is built. Naam. Wuqad. Eh, naam. Wuqad. Ihtada al-du'at wal-muslihoon fi kulli zaman hadhu anbiya'i wal-mursaleen. And this, and due to this you find that those callers and those rectifiers and reformers or those who brought rectification, right, 
they imitated the, the prophets and the messengers in every time. So those callers and those, and those ones who were rectifying their people in every time, every era, every time in every era, they called their people to the rectification of the people. No one came and said, oh, that's outdated. We're in a new time now. We have to change it up. No. In every time, every era, they taught their people at Tawheed and warned them from its shirk. They rectified their aqidah. And this was imitating the prophets and the messengers. So the Shaykh says, Kanu, yubda'una bid'awah ila Tawheed. So they began by calling their people to Tawheed. So the first thing they began with, they called the people to Tawheed, wa islah al and the rectification of the aqidah. Naam, wa islah al and the rectification of the aqidah. Who was the first thing they called them to? At Tawheed. Naam, wa islah al and the rectification of the aqidah. Thumma, then after that, then they went on to, and the Shaykh said, they said, they said, they said, they said, they said, the Baqiyya Awam of Deen. Then after that, they went on to command them with the rest of the commands of the Deen. After that, they went on to command them to the rest of the commands of the Deen. Now, and this is the way. So when we look, especially in this YouTube era, internet age, and so on and so forth, if we want to look and see if a person or some signs that an individual is upon that which is correct, then we look to their da'wah. Is, is, is it a da'wah that concentrates upon tawheed and the rectification of the aqidah, warning the people from the shirk, uh, and so on and so forth? Or is it a da'wah that keeps you yani, motivated politically and uh, deals with political this and this government that and that rule of this and so on and so forth? Uh, and we find the likes of it, then we know that this is not an individual that we need to be listening to and so on and so forth. Now, and it says in general, meaning that if a person ever gets brought and yani, you don't know who he is and he's brought to your attention or whatever, and you see all he's talking about is politics this and politics that and this ruler this and that ruler that and so on and so forth, and you understand this person is what? From the way of the Khawarij and so on and so forth, or he's talking to you. Uh, the likes of this inner faith, supporting and venerating the ways of intellectualism and so on and so forth. But you know, this person is not upon the way of the prophets and the messengers because he has no concern for the tawheed. He has no concern for the tawheed and the rectification of the aqidah. For those individuals who come and they say to you, uh, we're not going to speak about anything that is um, controversial. We're not going to speak about anything that is uh, may cause division amongst the Muslims. So we're not going to talk about the affairs of pre because Aqidah separates the Muslims. We're not going to talk about Tawheed because Tawheed causes separation. The Ahl al they say that. That Tawheed separates the people. Uh, Aqidah separates the people. So we're not going to talk about it. We don't want to separate the people. So as we hear that, do we know what? This person is upon <coughs> his guidance. He's upon a way that's other than the way of the prophets and the messengers. Naam. And ala kullin. As Shaykh al-Bani, he said that Naam, it separates the people. It separates them in a good way. It distinguishes those who are upon the truth from those who are upon what? Falsehood. So that's good. You know, we don't argue about that. Huh? It separates those who are upon Tawheed from those who are upon Shirk. That's good. We don't argue about that. Because this is what? That's the prophetic way. The Prophet as, 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 as those, as those malaika, they described him in that, in that, in that hadith. They said, وَهُوَ فَرَّقَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ And he, he divides the people. He, meaning he, Muhammad the, 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 the angels, they said about the Prophet and he separates between the people. Meaning what? He separates the believer from those who don't believe. He separates the one upon Sahih from the one upon what? Shirk. Damn. So yes. This is the way. So Allah Kullin, be careful. Be careful. And in general, as we say and always reiterate, don't give your ear to nobody unless you know 100% they're upon the Sunnah. Don't give your ear to nobody unless 100% upon the Sunnah. 
<coughs> he has the right aqidah. A person he comes and he says, a person he comes and he says, but I listened to this talk and I didn't really hear nothing bad. But I did notice that he was at a, a fitna event. Right? But I noticed he was one of the speakers at Ikna. But I heard his talk, brother, and I didn't hear no Akida mistakes. Then what do we say to that person? Whoever has a problem in his minhaj, he has a problem in his Akida, either we didn't see. Whoever has a problem in his minhaj, he has minhaj issues, then he has problems in his Akida, even if we don't see it. So as soon as we see who his associates are, his associates from the Hizbis and al Bid'ah, then we know, that's it. We don't want to do with him. Why? We know he has problems in his Aqid. Even if we don't see it, we know his problems here. We know there are problems here. Yeah? Now, and the Shaykh goes on to the next chapter. But with Nilahi Ta'ala, Atawakkafuna. We stop here, inshallah, with Ta'ala. But Atafi, we have a Qadr. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين